Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun With Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Pecani Design PD1782 Chronograph. So let's start with the wrist check. Sometimes you want to wear a big-ass diver. I'm wearing my Pecani Design PD1696 homage to Seiko Turtle. And Greg was wearing my Smil 8007. Grogu said that Bo-Katana sent Mando to Endor to protect an Ewok village from a giant freshwater lobster, but it didn't go very well. Mando came back and said, I fought the craw and the craw won. I fought the craw and the craw won. All right, let's take a look at the watch. It comes in this box here. I saw another reviewer do it and came in one of their newer boxes. So I guess it just probably matters which store you buy it from. And I don't remember which store I bought it from. I always just choose whoever is cheapest. And here is the watch. Isn't that a nice looking watch? I think they did a good job with it. So if you want a BK63 powered Mecha Quartz watch that's solid steel, uh, you might as well just skip my review and go buy this thing. This is the second watch I have reviewed from my 4-watch Pagani party unboxing video. This is a rather new watch from Pagani Design, and it is one of the few instances of a Pagani Design that isn't a direct homage of a more famous model from a more prestigious brand. However, even though it is not a direct homage, it is still very derivative, being somewhat a mishmash of common chronograph tropes such as the Panda Dial. This Pagani design might appeal to those who acknowledge that Pagani design makes a very good solid steel sapphire crystal watch for the money, but they don't like the homage game and don't want a watch that looks just like a Daytona or Speedmaster. Of course, I could be wrong and there might be a watch that looks just like this that inspired this PD1782, and if so, I apologize. By no means do I consider myself a watch expert. I am sharing my hands-on experience with the watches I review. This PD1782 comes in three different colorways. If you don't like the panda I chose, there's also a reverse panda. If you are bored with the whole panda thing, there's also a blue dial. If you don't want the bracelet, there's also a leather rally strap option. I must admit, I really do like the looks of the rally strap. And if I was buying the watch for my own personal collection, I probably would have chose the strap. But for review purposes, I think it was more useful to review the bracelet. The watch is 39 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, but 41 millimeters if you measure at the case, because this is a cushion case, so the case is bigger than the bezel. 46.3 millimeters lug to lug with inverted end links, so the lug to lug is fairly short. It's 13 millimeters thick if you include this dome sapphire crystal. Has a 20 millimeter lug width. It weighs 131 grams on the supplied bracelet with a link and a half removed. Yes, I said half link. This watch has half links. Now, this watch doesn't have your typical chronograph bezel with a tachymeter. The tachymeter is on the inner chapter ring. So the bezel is polished everywhere, and it does have an edge, though. And then, once again, the tachymeter is on an inner chapter ring. And then we have the dial. The dial is kind of a cream color. It's, it's white, but not a bright white. So I kind of like that. And then we have the Pagani Design name and logo printed on top, not applied. In fact, nothing on this dial is applied. The indices are painted on, they're not applied either. And uh, then we have the minute markers and the sub seconds. Now the sub seconds are divided into four, but the VK63 does five ticks a second. So it's not movement accurate. It's more uh, just your basic watch accurate or pattern after your basic watch, but not the actual VK63 movement. And then we have stick hands, and they are loomed. And then we have the chronograph second hand, which is not loomed, but it does have an orange tip. And that orange tip, I like that. Then this is a VK63, so the right subdial is the 24 hours. The left subdial is a chronograph minute counter, and the bottom subdial is a running second hand. And there is no date on this watch. I kind of wish it had a date because I just like having a date. I 
I always know what day of the week it is, but I never know what day of the month it is. I had to check today when I was setting my uh, uh, guy in that I'm wearing right now. I just didn't know that was the fifth. I had to look. So I wish, really wish it had a date. And yes, a lot of people don't like dates on their chronographs because they think it ruins the look, especially a 4.30 date. But this one would have worked at the six because of the way the subdial is just a uh, part of the background and not a separate. So a, a date really would have looked well. Uh, Tag Heuer does that a lot with their Monaco's and Carreras. We'll have a date right there at the six and I think that would have worked well. Of course, I don't know if uh, Seiko sells a VK63 with a date wheel like that because you can't use the standard date wheel if you have your date at the six. They do with the VK64, obviously, because a lot of VK64s have a date at the 6, but I don't know if they sell one with the 63. And if Pagani Design had to buy separate date wheels and swap them, it would just increase the cost of the watch. Then we have a sign screw down crown, giving you 100 meters of water resistance. Really, they didn't have to bother with the crown because of these pushers. You can't screw down the pushers. So locking the pushers is much more important than locking the crown. So I do not advise uh, swimming with this watch, even though it has a screw down crown because it does not have screw down pushers. And if you push these pushers underwater, you will let water in. But the thread action is good. The crown is a little small. Wish it was a little bit bigger. But the thread action is good. And there's not a lot of resistance when you screw it back down. So that's nice. Then we have a dome sapphire crystal. I went ahead and tested it. Pagai Design has been pretty good about being reliable on their sapphire crystals. And never fibbing about it. But I tested it anyway. And it is indeed sapphire and I don't know if there's AR coating or not. Uh, the reflection doesn't seem to be too bad. It's definitely a lot better than that last Pagani design. I did the PDYS008. That one, the reflection was horrible. And then we have the case. The case is a cushion case. And it's nicely brushed. And then it does have a... Is that a small... No, that's not a chamfered edge. No chamfered edge, but I do like the brush. And then we do have circular brushing up top. And it looks like it's polished on the bottom. I always, I can never figure out why watches would do that, polish the bottoms, but sometimes they do. But yeah, I like the case. And this being a cushion case, it really doesn't have traditional lugs. The lugs are more like cutouts of the case. But the brush works really nice. They did a good job with the case. Then we have a screw down case back. It says water resistant 100 meters, stainless steel. Then gives the Pagani design name and logo and the model number. It's a simple case back. Does the job. Doesn't have any fancy markings. You don't really need any anyway. Underneath the case back is the VK63 Mecha Quartz Movement. This is the go-to movement from Pagani Design and a lot of other Chinese Amish companies making chronographs in this price range. The biggest appeal of the VK63 is the smooth sweeping chronograph hand. Press the top pusher and it starts ticking away five times a second. Most quartz chronographs, they only tick once a second. And a lot of quartz chronographs have a small second chronograph hand. But so that's why the VK63 is so popular. It's an actually somewhat useful chronograph. Press it again to stop. Press the bottom and you get an instant snap back. Now, one bad thing about the VK63 though is you can't change the alignment of the second hand and adjust it. And if you look close, close, this one's just a hair to the right. And there's nothing you can do about it other than pull the hand and reset it so so when you get these uh out of alignment issues there's really nothing you can do about it 
on a lot of chronographs, though, a quartz chronographs, you can set the position of the second hand so you can you can make up for misalignment at the factory. The bracelet is a three link and it has solid end links. And instead of screw pins, though, we do have push pins, and I prefer push pins anyway. I say that every review, but push pins, I never have them come out on me. I've had many a screw pin come out on me. And this one has a butterfly clasp, which is unusual. You usually don't see butterfly clasp on watches like this. And it is signed. I've had difficulty, though, with uh, one position, just not wanting to close. So I don't know if it's just mine. So I've had kind of difficulty closing the clasp every now and then. And as I mentioned before, it does have half links. One of my viewers said the half links don't work and they're just there to connect the clasp and he was wrong. Because as you can see, I took one of the half links out. And so I was able to get the perfect fit on this watch. The biggest complaint of butterfly clasp is no micro adjust. And the best thing they can do about that, though, is to add half links. And Pagani Design did that. So that's a plus for Pagani Design. I've never seen them use half links before. So I'm really happy with that. Here is the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. I think that looks nice. It wears nice. The sits nice and flat. And the bracelet really contours to the wrist. And because it had half links, I was able to get the perfect fit. If I didn't remove the half link, it would have been too loose. If I would removed the entire link, it would have been way too tight. Now, one thing though, I only removed one and a half links. So this bracelet is way too short. So I don't think you could even fit an eight. So if your wrist is eight or bigger, you're gonna have to ask for some extra links. Hopefully the store will accommodate you. Here we are in the loom room. When it comes to loom and Pagani design, I sometimes feel like I'm in an abusive relationship, praying for that little glimmer of hope among the darkness. As we speed up the time, we see the indices disappear immediately, but the hands are much better. By no means good hand loom, but at least so-so and somewhat useful. The hands are what is important, and I have seen much worse from Pagani Design. What do I like about this watch? Well, it looks and wears nice. I really like this cushion case. They did a really good job with it. Nice brush work. I like the fact that it has half links, so you can get the perfect fit, even though it has a butterfly clasp. What are my grapes and groans? No date. They could have put a date at the six, and it would have looked great. And I don't know if I got a bad one or not, but I've had a little difficulty closing the butterfly clasp on one side. The loom is really bad. And the bracelet is just too short. I only removed one and a half links. Do I recommend this watch? Sure, this watch is great. It looks nice, it's solidly built and has a VK63 movement. So what's not to like? Well, thank you for watching my review of the Pagani Design PD1782, and I will be back with an unboxing. I got two watches coming in today. One not one is looks really, really good, and one not so much. And if you like this Pagani Design, be sure to buy it through my affiliate link, and I'll get a small commission, and I'll be able to keep this channel going. And be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so I get more views and more advertising revenue so I can keep this channel going. Bye.